welcome to the Life After Plus One podcast, where we turn life's lemons into delightful lemonade. Get ready for inspiring stories, uplifting conversations, and all the tips and tricks to rock your single parent journey with style. I'm your host, Leanne, and it's time to embrace the adventure of Life After Plus One. So let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Life After Plus One. I'm Leanne, your podcast host and your single parent mentor and coach. Today, I want to talk about a bit of a tricky one, and that's dating through the custody battle. Now, really, it does come down to personal choice. Personally, I'm going to say it straight off the bat here. I don't think it's the best time to date whilst you're going through custody. Now, I will say that every situation is different. It could be pretty amicable. You could be at a place where you're just happy to go 50-50 and it's pretty easy, pretty smooth. And there's no issues. There's no fighting between you and your ex. It's super calm. You're both on happy terms. Then I would say that's probably one reason why I may overlook that. If you're not in that situation, then I don't think it's a good reason. I don't think you're in a good place to be dating when you're going through a custody battle. If you're in a messy custody arrangement with your ex, there's a lot of negative conversation, there's a lot of fighting, a lot of arguing, a lot of disagreeing on what you both want, then let me ask you this question. Why are you bringing a new person into your world in this time when you should be fighting for the most important people in your life. Who are your kids? That should be your priority right now. Now, I totally understand that we all need a support system. We all need to have people around us when we're going through these difficult times. You don't want to be bonded by someone or with someone for all the wrong reasons. You want the right people around you. If you're going through something that's quite messy, there's a lot of drama, the, the, it could result in the ex and your new partner having conflict, then why are you dating? Focus on what's important. Now, it can be easy to get into this pattern. You just want to prove a point to your ex and show them that you can meet someone nice and easy. Maybe you just don't like being single. Maybe you just don't know how to be single. You just don't know what to do. So you need someone in your life because you've been so dependent on someone this whole time. And if that's the case, go back and listen to some of these previous episodes. But this is not the time to be looking for to bring someone new into your life. This is not the time to be out wooing and impressing somebody new. This is the time you should be giving all of your energy to focusing on what's best for your kids. You are not in the right headspace and mentally and emotionally, you are not in the right place to give another person love and attention and be there for them. Now, it's quite common and I have seen a lot of situations where people are dating someone that is going through this situation and they're wondering why their partner's not present for them. They're not giving them the attention that they need. They're too busy messaging the ex and doing this and doing legal issues because they shouldn't be dating. They should be focusing on something else. Now, if you're in a situation where you're not personally going through the custody battle, maybe you're dating someone that is, are you at a place where you can give them that attention? Are you at a place where you're willing to not be the priority in their life? Are you at a place where you can risk being caught up in drama between them and their ex? Because usually if it's a toxic breakup and there's a toxic child uh, custody battle, then good chance the ex is not going to be happy with the new partner. It's going to end up being a battle. Do you want to get involved in that? So if you're at a place where you need someone in your life and you feel like you need people around you to support you whilst you're going through this and you think sitting on a dating app and meeting someone new is the best idea, I want you to really think, is it really the best idea? Because I can tell you now, as soon as I meet someone that says to me, I'm not fully divorced yet, I'm still going through custody, I'm going through this, I'm like, no, I'm out. I'm out. You need to get that shit sorted. 
before you can move on with your life. Now, other people might think differently, but I have dated people in that situation and they are not in the mental headspace to give you the attention, attention, I should say, sorry. They are not in the headspace to give you the attention that you deserve and that you need. Now, it's also important to remember, you do not want your dating life to affect your custody. Now, I'm not saying it will, but you don't want to be in a situation where maybe your ex sees you dating someone and it might reflect on the time that you end up getting with your kids. Now, again, I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. I'm not having an opinion on this. I'm saying that could happen. You could be in a situation where your ex may see you with a new partner and they may think, well, they shouldn't be having the kids for this often if they've just got different people coming and going. They're dating, they've got all these different men or women coming from the house. Why should they have the kids all the time? Think about how dating someone and rushing into the dating world can have an impact on the final result and can have an impact on your kids. Because bringing a new person into the kids' world as much as a lot of people don't realize it does, it has a huge impact on them, huge, especially when mum and dad have just freshly broken up. They're still processing that and they've brought someone new into the situation and they've got to be like, well, what's just happened? Who's this person? They need to process one thing at a time. They are kids and people think kids are resilient. They get over things quickly. They don't. They bottle it up. They're confused. They don't, they don't know what's happening. Don't rush into these things. Now, if you feel that you think you really do want to be out dating, you really think that you're ready to be out dating, it is extremely necessary to communicate where you're at with your new potential partner. And I think that is something that you should be telling them straight away as early as possible. Because as I said, there's a lot of people that will not get involved with someone that is going through divorce and custody and financial settlements and everything else because it's messy. It's messy. They need to figure out and sort out and finalize that part of their life before they can move on with a new chapter of their life. Get that sorted first. And if you really need to have someone in your life to help you and get through this, because you probably will, going through this is a lot. It really is. So I can understand why some people think going into the dating world is a good answer because you feel like you need someone there for you. You feel like you need a bit of support. It is emotionally and mentally draining for both parties. I understand. But is finding a new potential date, lover, romantic partner person in your life, is that the right person to choose? Do you not have a friend, a family member, someone that you're close to that you can use as support instead of jumping straight into the dating world? Because relying on a friend or a family member will give you the advice you need. They will give you the support you need. Good chance they know both sides of the story. They probably know your ex. They know how to handle situations where if you've got a new person coming in, more than likely they'll probably come in hating your ex, which they shouldn't. It's not their business to, but it happens quite often. People come into new relationships automatically hating the ex just for the fact that they're the ex. And then they're going to have their bias opinion about the whole situation, which is going to be in your favor and is going to be against the ex and if the ex finds out is that going to trigger more drama and then it might trigger drama between the ex and the new partner these things get very messy if you've put all that together and understood what I've just said they get very messy you've just broken up your emotions are high you're both angry you're both pissed off you're both hating each other So bringing a new person in while you're both feeling all these emotions is only going to add fuel to the fire. It's not going to benefit anyone. And you don't want someone coming in that's going to be judgmental on your ex and not give you an open-minded or neutral opinion. That's what you want. You want the support from someone that's going to be level-headed and say, okay, they've done this, but... Maybe they've got a point. Maybe they're right. Where you don't want someone coming in saying, oh, she's a bitch or he's an asshole or, and just um, automatically hating on the other, 
on the ex, on the kid's other parent. You don't want that. You want the support and advice and you want the people in your life that are going to offer you a good neutral opinion. Even if it's an opinion you don't like, sometimes they're the best opinions constructive feedback. You need people that are not just going to come in causing more stress in your world because they hate your ex, causing more stress in the world, trying to change things with the kids and forcing you to go for this and forcing you to go for that and forcing to change this. You don't want someone that's going to confuse the situation. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen in every situation, But there's a good chance it will happen when you've got someone new coming in. They're probably going to want to support you and they're probably going to want to see you get everything you can. So they might try and force things and change things so the ex doesn't get as much or the ex doesn't get this or the ex doesn't get that. To be honest, it's not their business. I mean, you're more than welcome to tell this new person anything you want. But the business and the relationship that happened between you and your ex is between you and your ex. And you guys need to sort that out and finalize that between you two, not you two and your new partner or whoever the other, the ex's new partner. You two need to sort it out on your own without the interference of someone new that's only heard one side of the story. There is always three sides. There's how you've perceived it, there's how the ex has perceived it and how other people perceive it. The, the, the real story, your story, my story and the true story. Isn't that what they say? So, so please don't try and rush yourself into the dating world because you can't handle being alone. You don't know how to do parenting duties on your own and you feel like you need someone there. You don't like being alone on weekends. You just need some extra help. You need support. You're lonely. Don't go into the dating world for those reasons when you're going through custody battle. And if you think that you really are ready to go out dating, then ask yourself this question, why are you dating and what is it that you're looking for? If you can say you're looking for someone for all the right reasons, then go ahead, go for it. But if you're looking for someone because you're lonely, if you're looking for someone because you don't know how to do it on your own, if you're looking for someone just to help you through this process, you need a bit of support, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Use your family, use your friends. That's the support you need. You cannot give the right amount of energy to show a new person who you truly are. You can't show someone what you really think of them. You can't be the best version of yourself when you're going through possibly the worst experience of your life or the hardest experience of your life. Because if you're going through everything else on top of the custody with financial settlements and divorce, that's probably one of the most difficult challenges of your life. It's hard. Divorce is hard emotionally, mentally. It's draining. So what kind of person do you think you can be to somebody who you're bringing into your world for the first time when you are going through the most difficult thing in your life or the most challenging experience that you've been through in your life. And it's probably going to drag out for some time. Are you going to be the best version of yourself for this person? You probably won't be. There is no way you can possibly be the best version of yourself When you're fighting for your kids, you're possibly fighting for your money, you're possibly fighting for your home, you're possibly fighting for a lot of things. Why would you want to be in a situation when you want to start dating and meet somebody new when you've got all this other stuff that's happening that's all negative stuff? So I I kind of get it in a way because all of that is negative and meeting someone new is a positive and it kind of outweighs it a little bit. But that's not the positive you need. If you need something good happening in your world, then you know what? Don't get in a relationship. Just go look for a friend with benefits where there's no strings attached. Have a bit of fun. If that's really what you need, it's not what I'm into, so just throwing it out there, guys. But if that's what you need to make you feel good, then go and do it. But say that's what you're looking for. Say there's no commitment, no strings attached, just want to have some fun. Do that if you need that during that time. But going through the process of finding a partner and getting into a relationship is not the smartest move when you're going through all this. And in addition, 
just think about how this impacts the kids. And some people get into a routine of thinking it's okay to introduce the kids to someone new straight away. Why they do that, I don't know. You don't want to just introduce the kids to anyone and get their hopes up. And you don't want to introduce the kids to someone when you're going through a breakup with their mom or their dad. You don't want to introduce them when you're still working out when you can and can't see the kids. Worry about what is most important to you in your life. And as I said, going through a breakup is fucking hard. It is difficult in every way possible, mentally, financially, emotionally. It's draining. It's difficult. And then you've got your custody, your financial settlements. It's all a head fuck. Focus on that. Put your priority on what is most important in your life in that time. And if you're still not sure, I want you to ask yourself, will meeting someone new have an impact on this custody result? Will meeting someone new have an impact on the relationship I have with my ex whilst this is still happening? Will it have an impact on the financial settlement? Will it have an impact on the divorce? Will it have an impact on the interaction I have with the kids? That's what's important to you, your kids. Now, I'm not saying I agree with tit for tat, drama, trying to prove a point and all that kind of nonsense. But when you're going through a breakup, when it's a very toxic one and there's just shits hit the fan, it's very easy to let things be controlled by your emotions instead of with your head. And it's quite common for people to react to situations out of anger when they see a new person. Well, they've got a new partner. Well, I'm going to make sure they don't get this or how dare they have them in the house when my kids are there. I'm going to not make sure they don't get that. Now, I don't agree with that, but it does happen. It does happen. So if your ex is someone that's going to do that or that's going to get the shits with where you're at, And what you're doing whilst you're still going through this. Now, I'm not saying they should be interfering with what you're doing. But if it's relating to related to meeting someone new whilst you're going through all this, then if they're going to react to that, do you need that? Now, I understand that's your ex now. You're separated. You're more than, you know, it's your adults. You can go your own separate ways. You're entitled to make your own choices and do what you want. That's fine. But are your choices based on the right reasons? Are you thinking with your head? Or are you just thinking, fuck it, I just need someone in my life? Are you thinking, I just need someone to help me get through this? Are you thinking, fuck it, I just don't care about them. I just need someone else to distract me from all this bullshit. And that's quite common. That happens a lot. People go into the dating world when they're going through this as a way to distract themselves from all that negative drama. Is that right? Hell no. No, because not only are you dragging this person along into your drama, you could also be jeopardizing the outcome for yourself. And you could also be jeopardizing the relationship you have with your ex, which you don't want to do because... The relationship you have with your ex is not something that's just going to end once the divorce is done. You guys need to be in contact for quite a lot of years to come because you are co-parenting together. That's what's important. Having a good relationship with your ex for the sake of the kids. Resolving this in a mature way for the sake of the kids. That's what's important. Not just finding the next best thing because you need somebody to make you feel better. Like I said, Go find a friend with benefits. Go have some fun and let them know that's what you're looking for. You want to find something that makes you feel good? Go punch a freaking punching bag. Go out and have a few drinks with your mates. Do what you need to do. Sit down and cry. Let it all out. It is good to have a good cry. No one is happy 24-7, I can tell you that. Let out your emotions. Have a good whinge and a good bitch to your friends. Let it out. But don't look for the next best thing By jumping into the dating world, when you are not mentally and emotionally ready to bring someone new into your life, 
You cannot give them the best version of you when the experience that you're going through is probably going to bring out the worst version of you. And it may not come out to the new partner, but it's not a good experience to drag this new person through. And this new partner may know about it. They may be fine with it. They may be accepting of it. But do they know what they're getting themselves in for? Have they dated someone that's gone through this before? They possibly haven't. So if you're looking at dating someone while you're trying to work out your custody arrangement and you're trying to fight to have your kids more, you're trying to be included in your kid's life, don't focus on finding the next best thing from someone on an online dating app to make you feel good. Unless it's someone that is going to have zero interaction with your kids, they're going to have zero interaction with your ex, and they're going to have zero impact on the outcome. And there's no strings attached. It's a bit of fun. But you do not want to have someone coming into your life when you can't commit to them, you can't give them what they need, you can't be in the right headspace to try and impress them and trying to make them happy because you're worried about your finances, you're worried about your house, you're worried about your kids, you're worried about everything else. You need to focus on resolving that matter, close that chapter of your life, then start a new one. Don't start a new one in between the last one while you're still resolving everything else. So that's just some food for thought on the topic of dating while you're going through a custody. So as you can gather, I don't agree with it unless you're at a place where you guys are completely amicable and it's an easy split. You're both happy with each other. There's no drama. There's no fighting and you can move on and resolve things easily. Then you know what? Go for it. But make that clear with your new partner. Let them know where you're at and let them have the choice on whether they want to continue a relationship with you or not. And if they choose not to, then do you need to jump back in and look for another person to fill that void? So as I said, I get it. When you've broken up from someone, you're lonely, you're hurt, you're upset, and you want to have someone in your life that's going to make you feel better. You want to have someone in your life that's going to make you feel good. But it's not their job just to be a temporary fix for you whilst you're going through this. That's not fair on them. You need to find a friend or a family member or a hobby or a sport or activity, something like that, that is going to make you feel good. Not a temporary fix from another person where you're screwing with their emotions, you're screwing with someone's feelings. It's not fair on them. You don't want to drag someone along in your toxic journey. Don't drag them along for the ride. Leave them to find their person. You will find your person in the right time But whilst you're going through this, it's not the right time. Get yourself in a better headspace. Get yourself mentally and emotionally cleared and sorted and get rid of all this stress. And I say it again, especially if it's a messy breakup and a toxic one. If you've got a lot of drama with your ex, there's a lot of fighting, a lot of battles, a lot of back and forth, tit for tat, trying to prove a point. You're fighting for this, you're fighting for that. Don't focus on bringing in someone new. That's the last thing you need. You're adding another element to all of this drama. And if you need someone to talk to, hey, I'm here. I would love to talk to you. I would love to get you through this journey. Because that's what it's about. You need to know how to handle these emotions. You need to know how to handle these feelings. And a lot of people don't. It's an You're walking in foreign territory. You're going through something that you've never been through before and people don't know how to handle it. So they think the best way to handle it is to get someone new and they can help them get through it. That's probably the worst thing to do. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up now. And, you know, that's just my opinion. Just some food for thought on if you're going through a breakup, you're going through custody, financial settlements, divorce, everything else, and you think that meeting a new partner is what's going to help you get through this. I want you to sit down and really think about that decision. Are you doing it for the right reason? Why are you wanting to date someone? I want you to really think about that. And are you really clear with them about where you're at in your life? And one last question. Are you able to fully mentally and emotionally commit to them? 
Are you able to give them the best version of yourself? If you can't, then are you really making the right decision? Food for thought, guys. All right, so that's it from me. And like I said, if you are struggling, if you are in this phase where you do need someone to talk to, you're at a place where you feel like, I do want to date someone because I need some support, but I've just listened to this and I don't think it's the right thing to do. So let's have a chat. I do have free discovery chats. Send me a message and let's see what we can do to get you on a more positive path to get you through this challenging part of your life. And also, if you're loving the show, jump on below, write a review, give me a comment, tell me your thoughts, get it out there. The more comments, reviews and shares I get, the more Life After Plus One gets seen in the podcast world. So let's get it out there for our single parent friends. And thank you everyone for being on board and for listening and coming back week after week. And that's it from me, guys. And until next time, ah, I'll be in your ears then. Thank you for joining us on the Life After Plus One podcast. If you loved what you heard today and looking for some further support, then jump onto our website, lifeafterplusone.com. Plus, don't forget to check out our Instagram page for further resources and inspo. You can find all the links in the show notes. And remember, you're not alone on this path. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, keep thriving, keep growing, and keep exploring your amazing life after plus one.